It's the year 2000. Bill Clinton is president. Faith Hill holds the billboard number one spot with hit single Brief, and Disney is producing some of their best content in decades. In the quiet town of Denton, Texas, our story begins. For nearly a decade, students at the University of North Texas have reported seeing a mysterious white rodent scurrying about campus, an albino fox squirrel. Not to be confused with a leucistic squirrel, the albino squirrel is pure white with haunting red eyes. Eventually, the local squirrel is dubbed Thelonious, supposedly after legendary jazz pianist Thelonious Monk or Thelonious from Shred. Rumors begin surfacing of the squirrel's supposed good fortune students claiming that if you see the squirrel on your way to class, you will ace your next test. Thelonious served as a symbol of luck and prosperity for UNT students. A petition for the albino squirrel to be named UNT secondary mascot gained more than 300 signatures, though the effort was abandoned when in 2003, just as suddenly as he appeared. Thelonious vanished. 2004. A year has passed since anyone has seen the beloved rodent, and then another albino squirrel is spotted. Some nicknamed him Lucky, but he was widely known as Baby. Baby is cute. Baby holds the hearts of UNT students in a way Thelonious could only dream of. Baby is universally adored. The 21st of August. 2006 8 a.m. A cool breeze passes through Denton. The bells of Hurley ring over a silent campus. Baby enjoys a snack outside the University Union. Maybe it was an acorn. Perhaps a pine nut. Unbeknownst to Baby, a red-tailed hawk is watching from afar. He waits for the right moment. He swoops in and attacks Baby. Nearby students protest, throwing sticks and acorns at the hawk, causing it to take off, leaving baby on the ground. The students rush to baby's aid, only to find him deceased. A memorial service was held at Willis Library. The Willis Cyber Cafe introduced a new white chocolate drink in baby's honor. Students grieve by erecting a baby monument. A hawk attacked him. Um, I know it's the natural order of things, but it was still unfortunate for us. Are you crying? Yes! <laughs> Those who uh, weren't sure who he was called him the ghost of the trees. No, oh, I've seen that thing. Yeah. So. Nut. But uh, it's good to be here. I took a day off work for this. And I think he'll persevere. An albino mm -hmm. squirrel is a hard thing to find, though. I don't think he'll ever be replaced. Oh, you can't replace an albino squirrel. Say goodnight, Macy. But his memory will live on. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Less than a year later, yet another albino squirrel is seen on campus, still mourning the loss of baby. Students call this new squirrel baby's baby. Quick note about the genetics of albinism. For albinism to occur, you need both parents to carry the recessive gene. So you may have two squirrels who appear to be unaffected, but are actually carriers. If these parents had four squirrel babies, they would pass the gene to three of the four offspring with only one of the three carriers actually showing it. Anyways. Baby's baby becomes an icon. Merch is made. Shirts, pins, and a recurring calendar. The library holds a fundraiser with donation prizes including exclusive albino squirrel merchandise. Rumors begin to surface. Has the university been purchasing albino squirrels only to sell merch and make a profit? Perhaps the legends of luck were true. And UNT had bought the squirrels to increase the student body average GPA. On the 15th of October, 2008, Baby's Baby is seen alongside another, younger looking squirrel. Perhaps, Baby's Baby's Baby. From here, things get fuzzy. The younger squirrel is never named, so it's reasonable to assume that both resident squirrels operate under Baby's Baby's name. The last known sighting of Baby's Baby was in 2010, and then silence. The 9th of July, 2015, UNT Student Activities Twitter post acknowledges a new albino squirrel on campus. They hold a competition to come up with the best name for the new squirrel. 
Willis Library tries to push the name Willis, but it doesn't catch on. Although never mentioned in the post, the name Lucky Sticks. The internet sings his praises as UNT students rejoice in the albino squirrel's return. Lucky is more popular than any previous UNT albino squirrel. Lucky is loved by students in the Denton community as a whole. The 20th of December, 2016. Lucky goes for a morning stroll, the winter air feeling brisk on his skin, as he has just begun to shed his winter coat. He passes other resident squirrels, waving good morning with his bushy white tail. Lucky comes to the south end of the library mall. He hops off of the curb and into the street. As the car speeds off, a staff member runs to Lucky's side, scooping him up. They listen for a heartbeat, watch for a sign that the rodent is still with us. Lucky breathes. He's still alive. Nothing can kill the mean green spirit which lives inside this little squirrel. Not even a Honda. The heroic staff member rushes to their car, laying Lucky in the passenger seat, and speed to the nearest vet. They're almost there when... No. Lucky is no longer breathing. He didn't make it. Campus is in shambles. Now it's really merch time. Everyone is making merch. The university, Vietnams, even independent vendors get in on the opportunity to capitalize on the deceased rodent. Willis Library starts this adorable Willis the Squirrel thing. Once again, eyebrows are raised at the validity of the natural occurrence of the squirrels. The Denton Record Chronicle submits a request under the Texas Public Information Act for any and all receipts that show the purchase of albino squirrels by or for the University of North Texas, and any and all contracts detailing the purchase, lease or UNT sponsored care of albino squirrels on the UNT Denton campus. No such records exist. The question arises, what do we do with the body? Bury it? Burn it? Someone suggests using the squirrel carcass as a dissection study. Several calls are made and eventually, Dr. James Kennedy is contacted. Kennedy has another idea. We can't dissect him, says the director of Elm Fork Education Center and Natural Heritage Museum. Lucky deserves a place of honor. Lucky's body sits in a freezer for two years while funds are raised to stuff him. 2019. The fall semester begins and the university introduces this beauty, the Lucky mascot. Which is a lot less creepy than most other white squirrel mascots. It's been three years since the untimely death of Lucky. Hope is nearly lost when another albino squirrel is spotted. The Denton community was so attached to Lucky that everyone decides to call this new squirrel Lucky as well. Lucky lives on. Later in the semester, a new exhibit is unveiled in the science building. It's our old pal Lucky. Dr. Kennedy was finally able to get the squirrel stuffed. But because he passed while in the process of losing his winter coat, he looks a bit scraggly. He was also hit by a car, so that was a contributing factor as well. Not long after Lucky is put on display, the COVID-19 pandemic hits, and students must leave campus. So, where are we now? Willis Library is still cranking out these cuties. This post got pretty popular on the UNT Reddit page. Spoiler alert. That squirrel is in Michigan. Students have taken a liking to the local opossum population, often calling the possums lucky or poor man's lucky. The last known sighting of the current lucky happened the 31st of October of 2020, more than a year ago. Did we lose lucky again? Is he just taking a really long nap? Only time will tell. 
However, I have no doubts that we have not seen the last of the albino squirrels of UNT.